All right, welcome back to Portworx Lightboard Sessions. Today we're gonna to focus on Portworx on OpenShift. So we're gonna cover the basic OpenShift deployment, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, and how Portworx fits in to this architecture. So the first thing I wanna start with is most, at least production or even decent scale clusters have a set of master nodes. These are our three master nodes and they provide the APIs and the interactions for the uh, users go through the APIs. They also host typically etcd clusters, meaning that there's a state stored on each one of these masters about information of our OpenShift cluster. The next thing I wanna cover is OpenShift can be deployed on-prem or in the cloud. So think AWS, Azure, GCP, uh, those types of infrastructure providers. And on-prem, this is typically bare metal. So you could have storage arrays and racks of servers underneath here, uh, providing uh, the compute and storage for your uh, applications and open shift infrastructure. Either way, you have a set of nodes or VMs that deploy an OS. And these OS can be typically uh, RHEL or CentOS. Now, once the OS is deployed, OpenShift can be deployed to those rel nodes. And this box here represents OpenShift. OpenShift is deployed on a set of infrastructure nodes, including the masters, right? So three of these nodes can be the master nodes and the rest can be hosted for your uh, infrastructure applications or developers, production, uh, various workloads. And Portworks gets deployed on top of OpenShift. So Portworks is cloud native storage and it provides the persistent volumes and dynamic provisioning for OpenShift workloads that need persistence, such as databases and things like that. And we'll go into it a little bit more, but it gets deployed on top of Kubernetes. So in this case, it gets deployed on top of OpenShift. And Portworks runs on each one of these nodes as well. Not the masters though, just the worker nodes. So say that our on-prem infrastructure provides a set of LUNs to our nodes. Now in the cloud, this may be EBS or Google Persistent Disk. On-prem, it might be a storage array attached providing a LUN or directly attached storage in the form of SSDs, NVMEs, and SATA drives. What Portworx will do when it gets installed, it'll go down into the OS and consume that LUN or drive. And what this does, it provides Portworx with a way to create a single globally available storage pool across every one of our OpenShift nodes. And so you can deploy workloads across your OpenShift cluster and Portworx will take care of where the data is attached to your container. Um, if containers fail, it'll follow the container and, and so forth. So how does a user actually interact with Portworx? So the first thing that a user will do is typically they'll have some code, say in GitHub, and this code will reference a storage class as part of the YAML file that it's defined. The storage class can um, be provided uh, with a number of different parameters such as uh, replication, uh, IO priority, uh, various things, IO profile, 
specifically for, say, databases. Priority is more like high, medium, low, so we can say we want high. And repli replication, we say let's let's do three replicas. So a storage class will have this information and a YAML file, which will define a database or a stateful service, will reference that storage class. Now this gets deployed to the cluster and a service comes up, say this is your database or stateful service. Portworks will dynamically provision a volume with these pr parameters for this database container. Uh, and this is what we call the PV in OpenShift and Kubernetes. Uh, the reference to what it wants is the PVC, which uh, has the storage class name in it for dynamic provisioning. Now, because we have three replicas, Portworks goes ahead and stores replicas in three locations, hence replica three across the OpenShift cluster. Therefore, keeping this data highly available and in the case of failure of container or OpenShift node, the database can come back up as soon as OpenShift can reschedule it on another node in the OpenShift cluster, regardless of the underlying infrastructure or where a LUN is attached because it manages the replication underneath. So this is kind of the high level core value of Portworx on OpenShift. And in future discussions, we'll talk about uh, if you have multiple OpenShift clusters and OpenShift can provide um, DR using Portworx in between them, one thing that's worth mentioning here is that OpenShift can dynamically scale out and Portworx goes ahead and scales out with it, no problem, as long as the configuration is present in the OpenShift cluster. Stay tuned for more. We'll talk about DR, backup and restore, and more in the future on OpenShift. Thanks for watching.